Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about CE Smith trailer hubs and how to make sure you select the right one. To start with, we're going to have a look at this cutaway hub so you can see here what the anatomy of a hub is. Basically, we have the dust cap, a cotter pin, and a castle nut. We have outer bearings, we have inner bearings, and we have a grease seal. All of that is what's inside the hub flange. The key to this is finding out what the inside diameter is of the outer bearing and the inner bearing. Once you've removed the cap, removed the cotter pin, and removed the castle nut, you should be able to slide off the hub in its entirety and have all the parts come out. Once you do that, you're going to come across one of two different styles of spindles. You're either going to find a straight spindle like this one, which has the same inside diameter for both bearings, or you're going to find a tapered one like this, which is the same as our cutaway hub. On the tapered one, you'll notice that we have a different inside diameter for the two bearings. You'll notice that it's, it is actually tapered here, and that triangulation gives you a stronger, better, more rigid setup for your trailer. This is actually the most common type that we find in the market today, and these two sizes are actually the most common ones as well. Once you get your hub off, we need to measure the two areas on the spindle where the bearings sit. And we can do that a couple of different ways. One way being, if we have some, a micrometer, we can just put the mic on there, and get a measurement. This tells me 1.375, so an inch and three eighths, and the outside is 1.0625, which is an inch and a sixteenth. Another way, if you don't have a micrometer or you're not able to get to the spindle itself that you can measure is if you have the hub off and you can pop the old bearing out, you can actually use the CE Smith bearing gauge. Uh, these are available from a lot of our retailers as well as off of our website. You can download, print one out and cut it. Just when you print it, just confirm that it's printed at full scale and that these dimensions are correct. You then just slip, simply slide the gauge in until it stops, and that'll tell you this happens to be an inch and a sixteenth bearing. I can then go to the CE Smith hub selection guide and confirm that I've got a tapered spindle with inch and three eighths and inch and a sixteenth. And then all I need to know from there is what my hole pattern is for my wheel. If I use this cutaway here, you can see there's only three left, but this was a five hole pattern. So we've got five holes, and then you just need to know what the diameter of that circle pattern is. That's a little tricky with a five lug because it's an odd number, but one little trick you can do is actually measure from the outside of one across the hub to the center of the other, and you'll see we get four and a half. So this would have been a five by four and a half hub lug pattern. The other two you'll come across mostly are gonna be a four hole or a six hole. Those are fairly simple to measure. You just measure straight across on two opposites. So now we've taken off their hub, we've confirmed the two inside bearing diameters for the outer and the inner bearing. So you know those dimensions, you know your whole pattern, and you should be able to select the correct hub to fit your trailer. Once you've determined the correct part number for your CE Smith trailer hub, you'll notice that they actually come pre-greased. They're ready to install. So should you have a roadside emergency or something like that, you can just carry one of the CE Smith trailer hubs in its case and it'll be ready for you in the case of an emergency. You wanna keep your old castle nut. The only thing that is not replaced in the CE Smith hub kit is the castle nut, but you do get the entire hub, a new cotter pin, a new dust cap, as well as new lug nuts or bolts, determined depending on which part number you've had to buy. So you slide your entire assembly on, you put your castle nut back on, you set the tension on the bearing with the castle nut, so make sure you don't try and over torque it. You want these to be able to roll. You can see how these actually roll in there as well. And then you slide in your cotter pin in order to stop the castle nut from backing off. Slide your dust cap on and you're ready to go. So they're ready to go and happy trailing. 